Registration. If you haven't already registered to use GLAOps, registering is really simple. Click on the Don't have an account register here link. If you, know, if you have your GLAOps organization code or IMS provider code, you are ready to register on GLAOps as a user. Fill in the details on the registration page and submit your registration. Your organization administrator will review the registration request and approve you as a user. If you have already registered, input your email address and password and you're ready to log into GLA Ops. Make sure both email addresses match. I don't have a GLA Ops code. If you don't have a GLA Ops organization code or IMS number, or if your IMS number isn't recognized, you will first need to complete a GLA Ops organization admin form in order to register your organization. This can be found on the GLA's website. Print out the form, fill it in and send it back to the GLA Ops email. The GLA Ops team will review your application and confirm to your organization administrators when your organization has been approved on GLA Ops. The organization admin will then be invited to register as users on GLA Ops and the GLA will approve this request. Once approved, they will then be responsible for approving other users within their organization. If you've forgotten your password, click on the Forgotten Your Password link. Enter your email address and click on Reset Password. You will receive an email with the reset password link. Follow the details on this link where you will be asked to reset your password. This will then allow you to log in. The organization administrator has a few key responsibilities. One of these is to maintain the organization details on GLA Ops. Select the organization that you wish to edit from the table. Click on the edit button and update the details. If there are any changes to the organization, such as a change of address or a change to the primary contact details, you should edit and update the information within the Manage Organizations drop-down menu. It is particularly important to keep your organization's viability and governance score from the Homes and Communities Agency up to date within GLA Ops. If there are any changes to your organization name or IMS provider code, Please speak to your area manager, they will advise you on the next steps. Click save to keep the changes you have made. Another key role for the organisation administrator is to approve new users and to maintain the user roles for existing users. As administrators, you should arrange for other users in your organisation to register and become users of GLA Ops by directing them to the registration page and giving them your organisation's Ops code. Once the user has registered, it is the administrator who will approve this registration. The administrator should select Approve to approve a user. Once the user is approved, you can change the user's role by changing the role type in the drop-down. Request access to organisation. If you process projects and information for more than one organisation, you can request access to other organisations. Once you have been approved as a user for your main organisation, you can click on Request Access to Organisation. Simply input the other organisation's GLA Ops code and click on Send Request. If the organisation doesn't yet have a GLA Ops code, this means they are not yet registered in GLA Ops. They should therefore complete the new registration form. Consortiums and Partnerships if you intend to deliver your projects as part of a consortium or in a partnership with other organisations, we have streamlined the process to make it easier to provide the basic information we require. To create a consortium or partnership, you will first need to be assigned the organisation admin role. More information about assigning roles can be found in the Manage Organisation section of this video series. To create the consortium or partnership record, click on the Organisations tab and select Consortiums and Partnerships. If you are a lead provider, you will see a list of any consortiums or partnerships that have been already created and the program each is associated with. If this is the first time your organisation has created the consortium or partnership, this table will be hidden. To create a new consortium or partnership, click Create New. You will then be asked to provide basic information about your consortium. 
you will first need to select the program for which the consortium or partnership is being created. Please note, however, you can only create one consortium or partnership per program, and once created, you will no longer be able to submit projects as a single entity under the program for which the consortium was created. Next, select the type and give your consortium a partnership name. In naming your consortium or partnership, please ensure your name is unique to the organisation you'll be working with. For example, please avoid using solely the programme name. If you are an organisation admin for more than one organisation, you will need to select the lead organisation for the consortium or partnership you are creating. If you only work for one organisation, this will be pre-filled. Lastly, you will need to list all the developing organisations you'll be working with to deliver the projects under this programme. Note a developing organisation must be registered on GLA Ops prior to being added to your consortium or partnership. To add a developing organisation, you'll need to input each organisation's GLA Ops organisation code. Enter the code for each organisation, then click Select. The organisation will then be added to your consortium or partnership. Once you have added all your developing organisations, click Create. Your consortium or partnership has now been created and you're ready to create projects. Bidding. It is important you read both the funding guidance for the Mayor's Homes for Londoners Affordable Homes Programme 2016-21 and the OPS bidding guidance for providers before submitting a funding bid under this programme. Both these documents are available on the GLA's website. To submit a bid, you must first create a new project. From the Programs and Projects drop-down, select Projects. Then click on Create New Project to begin. You will be asked to enter the name of your project, the program you are bidding under and the type of project you want to create. Please refer to the Funding and Bidding Guidance documents to ensure you choose the correct type. There are six blocks to complete. You can complete these in any order, however we recommend you complete them chronologically starting with block 1. You will always need to press the edit button at the top right of the page before inputting or amending any information about a project. Here you input the project's address and coordinates, enter a brief description and give a planning reference number if necessary. Once the page is completed, press save to return to the overview page. If a mandatory field has not been completed, the system will allow you to continue, but you will not be able to submit a project until the block shows as complete. The second block to complete is Milestones. Again, remember to click Edit for each block. Here, you should select the processing route from the drop-down menu and then complete the milestone dates for your project. You may also add your own bespoke milestones to give more information about your project. Depending on when your project starts on site, you may be able to amend the grant payment percentage. Please refer to the funding guidance for more information on eligibility. Again, press save to return to the overview page. Now move on to the third block, calculate grant. Here you will input the number of homes in the project, splitting them by tenure type, and those that require funding and those that do not. You, can, you also need to include the total development costs for each tenure. If you are delivering homes that are not London Shared Ownership, London Living Rent or London Affordable Rent at the benchmark set out in the funding guidance, then please refer to the funding and bidding guidance further and consult your area manager at the GLA. Once you have inputted all of the units on the project, the amount of funding that the project is eligible for will be automatically calculated. Press save to continue and return to the overview page. Now go to the enter grant source block. In this block you will need to record the level of grant that the project requires. You will need to break this down by RCGF, DPF and affordable housing grant. If you do not need any grant, please select the nil grant box. Once you have filled the, this section in, press save. You now need to complete the design standards block. This block gives you the opportunity to record whether or not your project complies fully with the Mayor's design standards. 
If this is not the case, you will need to provide a brief explanation as to why. Once you have recorded this, press save and return to the overview page. The final block to complete is the additional questions block. It is clear which of these questions are optional and which are mandatory. Once these have been completed, press save. This returns you to the overview page. You should see that all the blocks come up as complete. Once they are all complete, you will be able to submit your funding bid to the GLA. There are three other ways of submitting projects for funding, and these differ slightly from the approved provider route. We will now go on to briefly explain how the bidding process for these other funding routes differ from the approved provider route. The developer-led route should be used when a provider requires funding to increase the level of affordable housing on Section 106 sites. The OPS bidding process is very similar to the approved provider route with one exception. On the developer-led grant page, you will need to confirm whether or not 40% or more of the habitable room space on the entire development is affordable. In the table below, you should set out the number of affordable homes that would be provided without GLA grant in the Section 106 units column and the number of additional affordable homes that will be delivered as a result of GLA funding. If the project has reached the 40% affordable level, grant will be automatically allocated to every affordable home included on the table. If the project has not reached the 40% affordable level, grant will be allocated to those homes in the additional column. The total grant eligible for the project will be shown at the bottom of the page. Another route on OPS is by submitting a request for indicative funding. Make sure you have consulted both the funding and bidding guidance before creating your indicative project. In the indicative grant block, you will need to set out in the table the number of homes you want funding for split by tenure and by year in which the units will start on site. In the indicative grant block, you will need to set out in the table the number of homes you want funding for split by tenure and by year in which the homes will start on site. Once you have completed this table, the system will automatically generate the level of grant required for these, these homes. Press save and return to the overview page. The final funding route on OPS is the negotiated grant route which is predominantly for supported and specialist housing. You should consult with your area manager before submitting a project through this funding route. This route is similar to the approved provider and developer-led routes, but requires providers to submit more information than on these other routes. In the request negotiated grant rate block, you should include a robust justification for the level of funding you're requesting from the GLA. You will need to fill in your grant request by tenure in the table below and set out the number of affordable homes and the number of supported and specialist affordable homes in the relevant columns. Once all the relevant fields have been completed, press save to return to the overview page. There are more questions to answer if you bid through the negotiated grant route, as can be seen in this additional block. We recommend you refer to the bidding guidance when answering these questions and speak to your area manager if not clear. Once you have finished, press save and return to the overview page.